this countdown, we have the abandoned building. Abandoned buildings are urban explorers playgrounds, except you have to be extra careful. There's a reason why some of these buildings are abandoned to begin with, and over the years have been subjected to structural failure. In January of 2019, a 21 year old man and his friends went to explore an abandoned building in Detroit. Entry into the building was banned. Obviously, it was abandoned. In fact, it was getting ready to be demolished. That night, the group of friends decided to play hide and seek. He got separated from his group of friends and they couldn't find him. They decided to come back the next morning and continue to look for him. That's when they found his body on the first floor. Police concluded that he fell through an elevator shaft and to his death, he fell all the way from the ninth floor. That is absolutely terrifying. But before I go any further, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up because it really helps us out and I appreciate it. Moving on to number nine, we have Diego Garcia. Diego Garcia is an island in the central Indian Ocean, part of the British Indian Ocean Territory. In 1966, the people on the island were employees as contract farmers, working on coconut plantations. But in 1968 to 1973, the farm workers were kicked off the island by the UK government, so that the US slash UK military could have a joint base on the island. Now it is off limits to everyone except official personnel, and it's highly, highly guarded and secretive. In fact, some believe it was used by the CIA to torture prisoners. But since it's so closed off to us, we will never know what truly went on over there. Moving on to number eight, we have North Brother Island. North Brother Island is a 20 acre island located in New York City's East River. The island was once home to Riverside Hospital, which was built to quarantine people with smallpox. Since the island was so isolated from others, they thought it was perfect to house the sick there. All those who died there were stored in the island's morgue. Then in 1943, they used the hospital to house people with tuberculosis. From 1951, it served as a rehabilitation center for drug addicts. But by the 60s, it was abandoned. Now that island stays that way and is off limits to the public. The island is very dangerous to visit because the buildings are rotted and deteriorating. Access is forbidden unless you have proper authorization. In our seventh spot, we have the sewer system. So in July of 2018, two boys in the North Hamptons decided to explore their town, which is fine but they decided to get into the town's sewer system and explore it from down below. I don't know what drew them in, that must have been super, super stinky. Now, Northampton sewer system is actually known to be quite complicated and referred to as caverns. So it's no shocker that they prohibit people from entering. And also not a shocker that this pair got lost down there. After being lost for several hours, they were rescued. Thankfully, the rescue team was able to locate their whereabouts and help them get out of the tunnels. Bad news is, they didn't smell the greatest after all this happened. And we have the tomb of Jin Shi Huang. In 1974 in China, a group of farmers came across something quite amazing. So they were digging a well when they dug out a life-size terracotta soldier. After that, archaeologists spent four decades excavating the site. They found an army of thousands of these terracotta soldiers. Experts say there's more than eight thousands of them. The soldiers are guarding the tomb of Jin Shi Huang, oh, which is off limits to everyone, including scientists. Why? Well, it's rumored that it's protected by deadly booby traps. Not only that, there's a high concentration of mercury in the tomb, which is very deadly for anyone if they entered without the proper equipment. So the tomb is off limits for any and everyone. In our ninth spot, we have Discovery Island. Discovery Island is now an abandoned park by Disney that opened in 1974. But before I go any further, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, comment down below, you know the drill, it really helps us out. It was located in the middle of Bay Lake by Disney World. In order to get to it, visitors would take a boat from Disney World. The park was known for having an incredible amount of exotic birds from all over the world. 
The attraction was basically like a miniature zoo. But in 1989, it was revealed that Disney wasn't taking proper care of the animals on the island. And the employees were caught doing some messed up things to the animals. In 1998, Animal Kingdom opened and people just really didn't care about Discovery Island anymore. The island closed in 1999 for undisclosed reasons and all of its animals got moved to Disney's Animal Kingdom. Now the island is just completely abandoned. Its structures are covered in nature, but it's illegal to go there. In fact, you're not allowed to get within 50 feet of its shoreline, and you'll be arrested if caught trespassing. There are a number of examples of people getting arrested for trying to get on this island. Just last year, some man was arrested after he was found camping out there. In April of 2020, Richard McGuire was arrested for visiting the island as well. Kind of makes you wonder why that area is so highly patrolled. Coming in at number eight, we have Lascaux Caves in France. The Lascaux Caves are a series of complex caves located in northwestern France. Back in the day, four teens were exploring the caves with their dog when they found a narrow entrance into a cavern. In the cavern, they discovered a plethora of prehistoric cave paintings. These paintings are anywhere from 15,000 to 17,000 years old. They mainly depict animals. In 1948, the caves were open to the public, but in 1963, they were closed. The artificial light was fading the vivid colors of these paintings. And then algae started growing all over them. So in order to preserve the history, they prevent anyone from going there. The only exception is a small number of scientists. They can go there only a few days a month in order to study the paintings. Other than that, no one else can go. Moving on to number seven, we have Room 39 in North Korea. North Korea has its fair share of secrets. Kim Jong-un likes it that way. He doesn't want anyone knowing what he's up to. Now, Room 39 is a top secret, highly guarded location inside of the Workers' Party building in Pyongyang. Journalist Kelly Olson said, and I quote, Room 39 is one of the most secret organizations in arguably the world's most secretive state. Only a few select people have access to this room. It was created in the late 1970s and no one really knows what goes on in there. But it's reported that it's very critical to the Kim family. And I'm sure you can imagine what the guards would do if you were caught trespassing or attempting to break into the room. It would not end pretty. Moving on to number six, we have Bohemian Grove. Bohemian Club is this group of rich men who meet in the Bohemian Grove in California every July. Among the attendees are US presidents, government members, and business leaders. You get the picture. Some very wealthy men. Some say that this is like a cult. Everything that goes on there is top secret. Apparently, what happens at the Bohemian Grove stays at the Bohemian Grove. In 2000, filmmaker Alex Jones and his cameraman snuck into the camp and filmed a Bohemian Grove ceremony. It was called the Cremation of the Care. Sounds very creepy. Here's a section of what he captured. And Midsummer sets us free. <laughs> mark with Paviglia, Italy. This island has a very, very dark past. During the Middle Ages, when the plague took the lives of thousands, this island was used as a dumping ground for the bodies. According to some reports, 50% of the island's soil consists of human remains. Then in the 1920s, the island had a mental institution, but the hospital workers were corrupt and often conducted experiments on the patients. Then over the years, the island has been bought and sold three times. The first two owners sold the island after witnessing some paranormal activity. It said that the souls of the deceased haunt the island. In fact, to this day, this island is known as one of the most haunted places on earth. Now the island is just abandoned and no one is allowed to visit it. I mean, you can, but you have to fill out a bunch of paperwork. In the end, it's not really worth it. In our fourth spot, we have Pripyat, Ukraine. I mean, it's kind of obvious why this one's on the list. So Pripyat was a city in Ukraine that had a population of 49,000 people. However, on April 27, 1986, all residents were forced to evacuate following the Chernobyl disaster. Pripyat was the most affected by the Chernobyl nuclear disaster since they were the closest to the power plant. 
they were the ones most exposed to the radioactive chemicals. Due to the radiation, the city will be left untouched for thousands of more years until it's safe enough to return. But of course, there have been a number of explorers that have gone there to check out the city's ruins. But like I said, because of the radiation levels, it's deemed too unsafe to go to, and people are warned not to. In our third spot, we have the Paris Catacombs. The Paris Catacombs are a series of tunnels located under Paris, France. In the 18th century, the catacombs were created when the Paris cemeteries were full. They needed a place to bury bury the dead. As a result, they buried the dead underground in a series of tunnels. There is approximately 150 miles of tunnels in a maze-like fashion, making it extremely easy to get lost. Ever seen the movie As Above, So Below? Now, a portion of these tunnels are still accessible today and have attracted numerous explorers. But there's an area in the Paris catacombs that is completely blocked off from the public. It's because it's extremely easy for you to get lost with the number of pathways they have. Also, there's over 6 million people buried there, so maybe not go there. A couple of years ago, two young explorers went into the band area and went missing for three full days. Finally, the authorities, along with their team of rescue dogs, found the boys in the tunnels. Thankfully, they both survived, only suffering from hypothermia. It could have ended much worse. In our second spot, we have Pluto's Gate in Turkey. Back in the day, it was believed that anything that entered this area would be killed by the god Pluto himself. On a number of occasions, animals like bulls would be led into this cavern. They would never make it back out alive. As a result, people were terrified to go anywhere near there. But a couple of years ago, it was discovered what was actually causing this. Scientists noticed that at night, the CO2 concentration would become heavier in the air. CO2 is not normally toxic, but in high concentrations, it is, and will starve the body of oxygen. So yes, if you go there, the level of CO2 is so strong that you could die from asphyxiation. It's super dangerous, and as a result, people are banned from going there. And in our number one spot, we have Wyndham, Australia. Located northeast of Perth, Australia, Wyndham is considered one of Australia's deadliest towns. This is because of its blue asbestos problem. In 1937, blue asbestos was discovered in the city's gorge. Years later, miners were unearthing tons of asbestos from the ground. It wasn't until 1978 that the government started pushing people out of their homes. They realized how deadly it was for them to be living there. It was increasing their risk for cancer, and in some cases, people were already developing lung cancer just from living there. Now, it would cost the town about $2.43 million to get rid of this asbestos problem. So instead of doing that, they just shut down the town completely. In 2006, the government turned off power to the town and had its name removed from maps and road signs. In fact, all roads that once led to this town are now closed off. If you do choose to enter this town, you'll find tons of huge warning signs advising you to turn back. Moving on to number six, we have Edgewater Medical Center. This abandoned medical center in Chicago is a very popular spot to urban explorers. In fact, little fun fact, this is the place that both Hillary Clinton and serial killer John Wayne Gacy were born. Now, securing the building has always been a problem. No matter how many signs or barricades they put up, people will always find a way to get in. In fact, now they have security guards monitoring the area to prevent people from trespassing. But still, this doesn't ward off the curious minded. One person that entered this banned location is urban explorer Mike Kinsk. He said he found blood samples, some labeled with serious infectious diseases. He also found several boxes of death records dating back to the 90s. There is apparently also personnel files, test results, x-rays, and more still inside the hospital. In fact, these files were said to be destroyed, but clearly they weren't. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Dulce Base. This one is the definition of creepy, just get ready for it. So the small town of Dulce in New Mexico is said to have a secret underground facility where they do a number of wacky experiments. The first claim of this base was back in the 1930s. From there, the rumors began to skyrocket. Now it's believed that there is a seven story compound beneath the city. And that's where there are human animal hybrids 
and human alien hybrids. Yeah, it's crazy. This base has very tight security and is regarded as one of the top forbidden places in the world. In our fourth spot, we have Centralia. Ah, oh, yes, this place is making its way back on another one of my lists. Centralia is an abandoned town located in Pennsylvania. It was once a populated town. However, a lot of residents were forced to leave due to unsafe living conditions. This all started after a coal fire ignited underground. This fire has been burning for almost 50 years, and it's predicted to continue for another 200 years. As a result of this fire, tons of sinkholes have formed, and hot smoke is released underground, and carbon monoxide has filled some of the residents' basements. In some parts of the town that are affected, it is said that the ground beneath them has reached up to 900 degrees Fahrenheit. 400 degrees Celsius. But even that won't deter some people. In fact, seven residents still live there. They refuse to move out of their home. But the US government has done their job to try and erase this city. They took away any signs directing people to this town, removed the town's zip code, and forced most of the residents out. But people still go there to explore, which isn't the best idea. In our third spot, we have Gilman, Colorado. Located in southeastern Eagle County, Gilman was a beautiful town located on the edge of a cliff. But that wasn't the reason why this town was considered dangerous. Around 1984, the Environmental Protection Agency discovered hazardous levels of arsenic, cadmium, copper, lead, and zinc in the soil, surface, and groundwater of this area. It was so toxic that they demanded a full evacuation of this town. Now if you visit the area, you will see tons of signs warning trespassers. The signs say things like hidden and visible dangers and risk of injury or death. So don't go there. In our second spot, we have the Doomsday Vault. I did not know this was a thing, but there is a Doomsday Vault located in Norway. This vault contains 309 samples of seeds from all over the world. So just in case of a huge disaster, people can get to this vault and still be able to rebuild society and you know make food. These seeds are highly, highly protected. Only a few people have access to this building. And they are only allowed to go inside on days when they are accepting new seeds. So don't mess around with this vault, okay? It's humanity's lifeline. And in our number one spot, we have Bangar Fort, India. This next place is said to be the most haunted place in India. Back in the 17th century, it was once a thriving town, home to 10,000 people. But rumor has it, all residents deserted their homes overnight. Why? Because it's haunted, duh. So there are two legends surrounding this place. Number one, there was a man named Mado Singh, and he was given permission to build this fort by the king under one condition. The fort never cast a shadow over his house. He said if this happened, then the city will perish. So this guy obeyed his command and made sure the fort never did. But Singh's successor ignored this and built the walls up higher. This cast a shadow over his house. And that's when the king's curse started. The second legend surrounds a princess named Ratnavati. Now, a man named Tantric Singha fell in love with her beauty, but she kept refusing his love and advances over and over again. What she didn't know was that he was a magician of the dark arts. So he used a love potion on her by putting it in her perfume. But the princess wasn't dumb. She figured this out and then poured the potion over a huge boulder. This made the dude furious and he placed a curse on the town. And now it's still believed to be cursed slash haunted. In fact, entry is banned for all foreigners. You need a special permit to get entry into this fort. And in no means can you ever be there before sunrise and after sunset. According to locals, three men decided to stay there after sundown. And things went south. One of the three guys fell into a deep well. Thankfully, he was rescued, but on their way to the hospital, all three of them got crushed in a freaky road accident and they died. 
Could this be the fort's curse? Starting off this countdown, we have the Stairway to Heaven. The Stairway to Heaven, or the Haiku Stairs, is a very steep hiking trail that was closed in 1987. It was closed because of lack of maintenance of the trail and it was deemed unsafe. It's considered one of Hawaii's most dangerous trails, but that didn't stop 18 year old Daylin Pua from hiking out there. On February 27, 2015, Daylin went out for a hike. He had previously told his grandmother, who he was visiting, that he wanted to do so, but she warned him against it. Also, you can get charged if you do trespass, but that didn't deter Daylin. On that day, he told his grandma he was going out for a hike, but she didn't think he would dare to go there. She was wrong. The last time anyone saw him was around 11 a.m. when he sent a photo to his family of him at that location. He never returned home. Of course, there are a number of theories as to what happened to him. Maybe he fell while on the hike since the area is dangerous. But then again, his body or bones were never found. Another theory is that he was kidnapped or killed by someone. In the photo he sent to his family, it said you can see a man lurking in the foliage. Was this his killer? Sadly, we might never solve this case. Coming in at number nine, we have Snake Island. With a name like that, who would even want to visit it? And as you probably guessed, it is covered in snakes. This island is apparently home to around 4,000 snakes, most of them being golden lancehead vipers, aka one of the deadliest serpents in the world. It's said that this type of viper can grow up to 18 inches long, and it's so poisonous that one bite can kill you within an hour. As a result, the Brazilian government has banned anyone from ever going there. If you do, well, chances are you won't make it back alive. Legend goes that a fisherman arrives at the island in search of bananas, but was found days later in his boat dead in a pool of his own blood. Then from 1909 to the 1920s, a family lived on the island to run the lighthouse. But according to another legend, the entire family was found dead after a group of snakes came into their home and attacked them. So like I said before, you don't ever want to go to this island. Moving on to number 8, we have Area 51. Of course this had to be on the list. Area 51 is a top secret government facility that is illegal for the public to visit. Anyone that does try to trespass can be charged, arrested, or even shot to death. This is what happened to a man in 2019. On January 28th, the man attempted to get into Area 51. He was then chased down by some cars for eight miles. When he got out of his car, he was shot dead. Another case would be the two YouTubers that were arrested in September of 2019 after they tried to sneak into Area 51 and were caught recording the premise. I know we all want to know what really goes on in there, like if they got aliens or whatnot, but curiosity kills the cat. Just saying. In our seventh spot, we have the Devil's Hole. With a name like that, maybe it's best you don't visit it. So the Devil's Hole is located in a national wildlife refuge in Nevada. You can tour the area, but access to the Devil's Hole itself is off limits. They have a sign and a fence guarding the area, and the sign reads as so. Due to the scientific importance of this area and its fragile nature, unauthorized entry is prohibited. Yes, they want to protect the ecosystem, but also so it is so dangerous to enter there. So Devil's Hole is like a little hole of water. When you dive in, it's filled with complex underwater caverns. Back in 1965, one night a group of four friends decided to hop the fence and explore the Devil's Hole. It was Paul, David, Bill, and Jack. Jack was on the lookout while the three dove in, but Paul never resurfaced. As a result, David and Bill both went back under to look for him, but then David never resurfaced. To this day, their bodies have never been found. Moving on to number six, we have Ramry Island. Tourists are banned from ever visiting this island, because chances are your vacation will take a deadly turn if you decide to go there. This island is home to thousands of saltwater crocodiles, and they weigh around 2,000 pounds. Even the small ones pose a threat to humans. They have the capability of killing someone twice their size. On top of that, they are highly aggressive and will attack anyone that enters their habitat. In fact, the most number of fatalities in a crocodile attack took place at Ramry Island. In 1945, British soldiers drove the Japanese fighters off the main area of the island, forcing them to flee into the marshy area surrounding the island. 
One problem, those marshes were filled with hungry crocodiles. As a result, 500 soldiers were killed by these crocodiles. So yeah, maybe don't go to this island unless you want to be crocodile dinner. And of course, there's a number of stories of tourists going to this island and then being attacked and killed by these beasts. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Bouvet Island. Now here's the thing with Bouvet Island. You can visit it, but it would be a death wish if you did. Bouvet Island is extremely isolated and it's almost completely covered by a glacier. Its nearest inhabited land is 1600 miles away. One way to get there is by boat, but it would take very long and you would be facing extreme weather conditions while doing so. As a result, most expeditions are done by helicopter. Even then, if the weather suddenly changes, you're basically screwed because the island is so remote and far away from other pieces of land. But in 1964, a lifeboat was found abandoned at this island. How did it get there? How could this little boat survive crossing the southern ocean? It's a mystery that still baffles many. But also, where did the passengers of the boat go, if they had any? We got no clue, just a couple of theories. And at number four, we have Vortex Spring. Vortex Spring is known for having pretty complex diving caves, but only those that have a diving certificate or are accompanied by an experienced diver can go there by themselves. In the 1980s, 13 people died in the vortex. There's one area in the underwater caves that are considered so deadly that it's blocked off, and people are prohibited from entering there. It's got this creepy warning sign with the Grim Reaper, and it's off often locked with a gate. It's just far too easy for people to get lost and drown in there. But that didn't stop Ben McDaniel. On August 18th, 2010, Ben was seen entering the water near the caves and was never seen again. This case is quite strange, like there's a lot of pieces to it. Some say he faked his death because he owed the IRS a lot of money, and also he had a failed marriage, so maybe this was his way of starting over. Or Ben really did get lost in the caves and drowned, but his gear or body have never been found. In our third spot, we have the Bolton Strid. The Strid near Bolton Abbey is said to be the most dangerous dangerous stretch of water in the world. Just by looking at it, you wouldn't even think it's dangerous. I mean, the current isn't even that fast. But below the water surface are strong undercurrents that will toss you back and forth against the sharp, jagged rocks until you die. It's also fairly deep and it could just suck you down until you drown. In fact, it has a 100% fatality rate. Everyone that has gone or fallen in have never made it out alive. Their bodies also have never been found. There are a number of stories of people trying to leap across the river only to slip and fall in. In one case, there was a newlywed couple visiting the Strid. However, upon trying to cross the Strid, the bride fell in and the groom fell in also trying to save her. As a result, there are a number of warning signs all around the area trying to warn people of the Strid's dangers. But of course, a lot of people ignore the signs since the Strid is so deceiving and looks pretty safe. In our second spot, we have North Sentinel Island. The reason why you can't visit this island is because it is home to a tribe that will kill anyone who dares to intrude on their land. They live their own life completely isolated from the rest of the world. In fact, they still live a hunter-gatherer lifestyle. But a man named John Allen believed that with the power of God, he would be able to convert them to Christianity and help them. He believed that this island was Satan's last stronghold on Earth. So in November of 2000, 2018, he headed out to the island. Now, the people that took him there knew of the dangers and really, really, really didn't want to, but he was so insistent that they finally gave in. In fact, they were later arrested for doing so. John's first attempt at making contact with them didn't go as planned. As soon as he stepped foot on the island, several men came charging at him, firing arrows. So he fled. But on November 16th, he tried again. He got a fisherman to drop him off alone and that was the last time anyone had ever seen him. When people went back there for him, they saw the tribe members dragging his dead body with a rope. And in our number one spot, we have the Secret Cave. It was the evening of August 17th, 2005, and five friends were having dinner together. They were Scott McDonald, J. Blake Donner, Jennifer Lynn Galbraith, Ariel Singer, and Stephen Hunley. While eating, the group got to talking about this secret cave, which was a legend where they were from. It's all about this cool secret cave slash hangout spot. Rumor has it that's where human sacrifices were made, etc. But of course, 
No one thought it was a real cave. That's when Jennifer said that it was real and that she had been there before. The friends, not really believing her, asked her to bring them there. And so they did. So basically, up in the mountains by Brigham Young University, there was this small opening to a cave. The entrance was in the shape of a Y. But in order to get to the secret hangout spot, Jennifer told them they would have to dive down one area through this underwater tunnel to the other side where there was an air pocket. The tunnel was 15 feet and the gap they would have to swim through was 20 inches wide. So it was just enough for people to squeeze through. On top of that, someone had put a rope in the water so you could just pull yourself underwater with. So that's what the four of the friends did. Stephen Hunley decided to stay back. He waited for the group for about an hour, and then he decided to call for help. And when police arrived, they were horrified at what they saw. So it seems like the group of friends successfully managed to get to the other side, but they couldn't make it back. The police ended up pumping out the water so that they could enter. And that's when they found all four of the friends' bodies stacked up against each other. It seems as if the person leading, who was Jennifer, got stuck on the way out and then she drowned. It would then be impossible to swim over her. So then the second person that went swimming was stopped at Jen's body and they couldn't get back out because then the third person was coming in. So everyone was just blocked in this small tunnel. Slowly but surely, all of them drowned in this small dark cave. For safety reasons, this cave is no longer accessible. Whoo, okay, that was a heavy one, so let's move right along to our comment shout out portion. I'll be shouting out comments from the video, top 10 mysterious things found in scary hallways. Bobby Wright commented, she is nothing less than a queen. Thank you, Bobby Wright. You are nothing less than a king. <laughs> Scar the Wolf Pup commented, I never get shouted out. Oh, that sucks. Maybe next time. I don't know, just keep trying. Maybe eventually you'll get a shout out. <laughs> Daisy May commented, could this girl talk any faster? Actually, Daisy May, um, I don't think I could talk any faster. I don't know, I talk at a really normal pace, so I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> we are about to embark on a journey into the shadows of secrecy, where access is denied and the mysteries run deep. These places have long been covered in secrecy, and it's time we brought them to the light. Let's delve into the mystical allure of the Issa Grand Shrine in Japan, a pinnacle of spiritual significance in Shintoism. Revered as one of the holiest and most sacred sites, this shrine embodies a tradition steeped in antiquity and mysticism. Uniquely, the Issa Grand Shrine is part of an ancient and ongoing ritual where it is demolished and rebuilt every 20 years, a practice known as Shikinen Sengu. This ritual, deeply embedded in Shinto, beliefs symbolizes the concept of impermanence and renewal, essential to maintaining the purity and power of the shrine. The materials and techniques used for reconstruction are kept traditional, honoring centuries-old craftsmanship. Access to the shrine's innermost sanctum, where the sacred mirror, considered to be one of the three imperial regalia of Japan, is kept, is extraordinarily restricted. This privilege is reserved solely for the shrine's priestess or priest, who is usually a member of the Japanese imperial family and no other person. Not even the emperor is allowed inside. This level of exclusivity and the profound cultural and religious significance of the shrine make it a fascinating, albeit very mysterious, destination. Next up, we have Room 39 in North Korea. Room 39 in North Korea represents a layer of mystery within an already secretive nation. Believed to be nestled in the heart of a ruling Workers' Party building in Pyongyang, Room 39 is enveloped in mysterious tales and a a lot, a lot of speculation. This clandestine entity is rumored to be a linchpin in a network of illegal activities primarily focused on generating foreign currency for the regime. It is said to be involved in a wide array of covert operations ranging from counterfeiting currencies to international insurance fraud and even illicit substance trafficking. The reality of what transpires within its walls is known to only a select few, shrouded in the utmost secrecy. This veil of mystery only compounds the intrigue surrounding Room 39, making it a focal point of international curiosity and speculations about the lengths to which North Korea goes to sustain its economy and fund its leadership's agendas. Next up, we have the Jiangsu National Security Education Museum in China. This museum, located in the heart of Nanjing, represents a unique facet of espionage history, but with a catch. It is strictly off-limits to foreign 
orders. This policy is not just a formality, it is rigorously enforced, underscoring the sensitive nature of the exhibits within. Inside, the museum houses an extensive collection of Chinese espionage equipment and confidential documents, offering an unparalleled glimpse into the shadowy world of spies and secret agents. It's a veritable treasure trove of state secrets, spy gadgets, and covert operations accessible exclusively to Chinese citizens. From cipher machines used during revolutionary times to modern day surveillance equipment, the museum provides a comprehensive overview of China's intelligence history. It stands as a testament to the country's very complex relationship with espionage. It is shrouded in mystery and very tightly controlled, mirroring the secretive and exclusive nature of the intelligence world itself. Next up we have the Woomera Prohibited Area, sprawling across the arid landscape of South Australia. This place stands as one of the world's largest military testing ranges. Covering an area larger than some countries, this vast desolate expanse is full of secrecy and tightly guarded against public intrusion. Established in the Cold War era, it has been an essential site for testing a wide array of military hardware ranging from cutting edge missiles and advanced weaponry to unmanned aerial vehicles and drones. The testing conducted here is crucial for national defense and international collaborations involving partners like the United States. The airspace above Woomera is regularly cleared for testing, creating a temporary no-fly zone that underscores the seriousness of the activities undertaken. Despite its importance, very little is known about the specific projects and experiments conducted within its boundaries, as strict security measures and confidentiality agreements keep these details out of the public eye. This combination of vastness, secrecy, and advanced military technology makes the Woomera prohibited area a fascinating and intimidating locale, far more restricted than most classified sites globally. Nestled in the ancient city of Oxum, Ethiopia stands a modest chapel believed to be the final resting place of one of history's greatest relics, the Ark of the Covenant. This sacred chest, as described in the Hebrew Bible, is said to contain the stone tablets of the Ten Commandments given to Moses on Mount Sinai. Shrouded in divine mystery, the Ark's presence in this chapel is guarded by a single monk appointed for life. This guardian, sworn by a vow of silence and seclusion, is the sole human allowed to gaze upon the Ark, making this one of the most restricted religious sites on the planet. This strict access and secretive nature of the chapel's contents have imbued it with a profound sense of reverence and intrigue. Pilgrims and tourists may visit the compound, but the chapel itself remains a tantalizing mystery, its secrets preserved within its unassuming walls. The blend of myth, religion, and historical significance surrounding the Ark continues to capture the imagination of believers and skeptics alike, making the Chapel of the Ark of the Covenant a unique and mysterious site in the tapestry of human history. Moving on down, we have the Heard Island Volcano. Heard Island, situated in the sub-Antarctic, is one of the most remote and inhospitable places on Earth. Dominated by the active volcano Big Ben, the island presents a landscape of dramatic natural beauty and daunting extremes. The harsh climate characterizes by persistent cold, fierce winds, and heavy snowfall renders access to this isolated island almost impossible. Besides its challenging geography, Heard Island is designated as a protected nature reserve, emphasizing conservation and scientific study while strictly limiting human interference. This combination of natural barriers and legal protection ensures that Heard Island remains one of the least disturbed ecosystems on the planet, a pristine sanctuary for wildlife, and a natural laboratory for scientists studying climate change and volcanic activity. Next up, we have the Royal Bedroom in the United Kingdom. Located in the heart of Buckingham Palace, the Queen's Bedroom, well, I suppose it's now the king's bedroom, epitomizes exclusivity and is undeniably one of the most restricted rooms in the entire United Kingdom. This room, steeped in royal history, is a sanctuary for the reigning monarch, filled with priceless artifacts and personal treasures. Its notoriety peaked in 1982 when an intruder, Michael Fagan, shockingly made it past palace security and into the room, an unprecedented breach that shook the foundations of royal security. This 
incident prompted a massive overhaul of palace security protocols, of course, transforming the bedroom into a veritable fortress within Buckingham Palace. Access to this room is now more tightly controlled than ever, reserved for a select few and guarded with the highest levels of security, ensuring that such a breach remains a once in a lifetime occurrence. Moving on, we have Area 122. Area 122, ensconced within the Antarctic Treaty's no go zones, lies secluded on an island in the Enderby Land, a remote part of Antarctica known for its harsh and unforgiving climate. This area is designated as a specially protected zone, aimed at preserving its unique and fragile ecosystem. It's a sanctuary for an array of polar wildlife, including species that are not found anywhere else on the planet. The strict restrictions in place mean that access is extremely limited, with tourists and even scientists requiring special permits to visit. These permits are seldom granted, ensuring that human impact on the area's pristine environment is kept to an absolute minimum. The isolation and protection of Area 122 make it one of the most intriguing and least disturbed natural areas on Earth, a true example of untouched wilderness. Next up, we have the Granite Mountain Records Vault. Owned by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Granite Mountain Records Vault is an awe-inspiring facility carved deep into a mountainside near Salt Lake City, Utah. This massive vault, constructed in the 1960s, is a fortress designated to withstand natural disasters and nuclear attacks. Its primary purpose is to house and protect a vast collection of genealogical and historical records, including millions of microfilm reels containing family history and vital records from all all over the world. The security measures surrounding the vault are extraordinary, featuring state-of-the-art technology and rigorous protocols to ensure the preservation and protection of these invaluable records. The public's access to the vault itself is extremely limited, with the church maintaining strict control over who can enter the facility. This secrecy and the critical nature of the documents stored within add to the vault's mystique, making it a topic of fascination and intrigue among both genealogists and just the general public. Next up, we have Porton Down. A British research facility located in Wiltshire, Porton Down is a hub of scientific inquiry dedicated to the study of chemical and biological weapons. Established during the First World War, it has since been at the forefront of research in these fields. The activities and experiments conducted at Porton Down are of the highest classification, covered in secrecy and subject to strict government oversight. This veil of mystery has made the facility a magnet for conspiracy theories and controversies over the years. It has been associated with everything from unethical human testing to the development of advanced, undisclosed weaponry. Despite its notoriety, Porton Down plays a crucial role in national defense, helping the UK to understand and defend against chemical and biological threats. However, the exact nature of much of its research remains a closely guarded secret, adding to its mysterious and somewhat ominous reputation. Starting off this down, we have Rock House Mine. Back in 2018, three young adults decided to go explore the Rock House Powelton Mine in the town of Clear Creek, Virginia. They were Erica Teedway, Kayla Williams, and Cody Beverly. Now, to get into this abandoned mine, they had to crawl through a small ventilation shaft in the mine. But while exploring, they got lost and were walking around in the dark for hours. When these individuals did not return home, a search party was sent out for them. They were missing for five days until thankfully they were located. Erica was found first. She got separated from her two friends. 30 minutes later, Kayla and Cody were found together. After this, a statement was released warning urban explorers to stop entering abandoned mines. So yeah, maybe don't follow in their footsteps and go exploring abandoned locations. Moving on at number 9, we have Prochiska Brana. And if you guys are liking this video so far, make sure to give it a big thumbs up because it really helps us out. Now this is considered one of the most spectacular landmarks of the Czech Republic. In fact, it's the biggest sandstone arc in Europe. Basically, it's a narrow rock arc. The arc is 16 meters above the ground and 26 meters long. But in 1982, the government stopped allowing people to visit there. Because of erosion and the amount of visitors, this arc was becoming way too dangerous. 
In fact, they believe that any time it can just collapse on its own. Which is why no one can visit the Ark anymore. It's definitely not safe. In our eighth spot, we have the Chapel of the Ark of the Covenant. Located in Ethiopia, this place is said to contain the two stone tablets that God gave Moses containing the Ten Commandments. It is also said to contain a pot of manna as well. Manna was given to people by God to sustain them while on their long travels throughout the desert. So yeah, if it's true and they do have those, then that's a pretty huge deal. But here's the one thing. Only one priest, and one priest only, is allowed to view the Ark. It's said that if anyone else sees it, then they will implode. And I don't think anyone wants to implode, so I doubt anyone has even tried to take that risk. In our seventh spot, we have Mesgorie, Russia. Believe it or not, but this is an entire town that's closed off to the public. The town was founded in 1979 and is a nuclear missile site. But that's unconfirmed. That's just what the rumors say. It's said that this place is home to automatic missiles that can be activated remotely. If you try to get into this town, well, good luck because it's heavily guarded and top secret. The only information that we have on this place is from images from satellite imagery. Now, the Kremlin claims, and I quote, the site is used for mining an emergency bunker for Russian leaders and a vault for the nation's treasures. We don't know if that's true or not, but hopefully we will never find out if it's really a nuclear site or whatnot. Moving on to number six, we have Krakow, Italy. Krakow, Italy was once a beautiful city home to a number of residents. Sadly, it was abandoned towards the end of the 20th century. This was due to a number of natural disasters that destroyed the town. The first natural disaster occurred in 1963 when a bunch of landslides affected the area. This is a result of the city being built on a cliff 1300 feet off the ground. And also, they had some sewer and water system issues. Then in 1972, a flood struck the area and made the situation so much more worse. Then in 1980, there was an earthquake and that left the city completely abandoned. Now the area is surrounded by a locked gate. It's said to be a ticking time bomb. At any second, it could just completely crumble. But here's the thing. It's a very popular filming location. In fact, some scenes from the film The Quantum of Solace were filmed there. So although you're not allowed to go there, they make an exception for film crews. But obviously, they have very strict rules that they need to follow. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Varosha, Cyprus. In the early 70s, Varosha was one of the most popular tourist attractions in the world. That was until 1974 when Turkey invaded Cyprus. As a result, the residents there fled for their lives. They were forced out of their home and never allowed to return. They lost everything. Now, since 1974, Varosha has been abandoned and under control of the Turkish military. The whole area is now fenced off and under constant supervision. If you try to break in, well, the army patrols have orders to shoot on sight. So don't even try to visit the city. They are not afraid to take down trespassers. And there are some cases of this happening to innocent people. Coming in at number four, we have the Island of Dolls. You all know this island by now. I have talked about it before because it's just so damn creepy. So this island is located in Mexico City and just as its name suggests, it's filled with dolls. These dolls are hanging from trees and buildings. They're just everywhere. Also, since they've been hanging for quite some time, they are covered in dirt and bugs, making them even creepier. Now, you're probably wondering how this place came to be. So back in the 1950s, a man named Don Julian started to hang dolls from trees as a way to protect himself against evil spirits. Paranormal things kept happening to him there, so he would hang dolls everywhere with the idea that they would scare the souls of the deceased away. Another version of the story claims that a girl mysteriously drowned there. And now the dolls are possessed by her spirit. In fact, some people say that they have seen the dolls move their limbs and open and close their eyes. So this man spent more than 50 years hanging dolls. Now it's abandoned and looks something straight out of a horror movie. Of course, urban explorers have trespassed out of sheer curiosity. In our third spot, we have the Proving Ground. Located in Utah, the Dugway Proving Ground is the main biological and chemical weapons testing site for the US Army. 
Apparently, this base also contains top secret US military research documents. As a result, it's a very top secret facility. In 1968, something controversial actually occurred at this base. I've talked about this before, but basically a high speed jet sprayed 320 gallons of nerve gas VX around the air in a test. This is so deadly that 10 milligrams can kill people instantly. Anyways, it sprayed in an area near a farm. And the next day, thousands of sheep were found dead. But the facility denied that it was their fault and said that they weren't testing chemicals that day. But they paid the rancher who lost his sheep over $300,000 and tried to keep the situation hush hush. But that didn't work and people are like, what is going on over there? Sadly, we'll never know what's actually going on. It's like Area 51. If you try to trespass, you can be shot down or arrested. In our second spot, we have Vault B. This vault is located in Padma Bhaswami Temple, a Hindu temple located in India. It was built in the 16th century as a holy shrine to Maha Vishnu. Later on, the kings of Travancore renovated it. Now, this temple contains six vaults, five of which have already been opened, and it contained up to $1 trillion worth of treasures. Yeah, these treasures are from the 16th century and include gold and jewels, you name it. But no one wants to open the last vault, referred to as Vault B. Why? Well, legend goes that it's cursed. Locals tell of a story of a man that tried to enter this vault but failed after a cobra came out of nowhere and killed him. So they believe that this vault is protected by a fatal curse. Another legend says that the vault is connected to the Arabian Sea. If you open it, it will flood the entire state. Not only that, but a man named T.P. Sundarajan, an Indian lawyer, made a petition to get Vault B open. However, in 2011, he unexpectedly passed away. People think that he was a victim of the temple's curse. And in our number one spot, we have the Cecil Hotel. I'm sure you guys have all heard about the Cecil Hotel, aka Hotel Death. It's the infamous place where Canadian college student Elisa Lam died and was later found in the hotel's water tank. Now, this hotel was founded in 1924 in downtown Los Angeles. In 1927, it opened up as a budget hotel. It had 19 floors and 700 rooms available. Originally, the hotel was meant for business travelers and tourists, but after the Great Depression, it became a budget hotel. Over the years, a number of deaths have occurred in the hotel. From murders to serial killers, the hotel is just plagued with darkness. Eventually, in 2017, the Cecil Hotel closed, and now it's off limits. But there are rumors that this place is haunted by Elisa or others that have lost their lives there. So urban explorers are determined to explore the now abandoned hotel. Take YouTuber Jake Weber, for example. He just recently posted several videos of him getting into the hotel and exploring it. He managed to bribe the security officer there and they let him and his friends inside for a couple of hours to explore and film. Guys, this, this is her room. This was her room. From elusive vaults hiding world-changing secrets to islands where time stands still, these places are shrouded in mystery, guarded tightly by security, and wrapped in intriguing tales. In a world full of mysteries, our journey isn't over yet. Before we dive into our list today, I have an exciting announcement to make. Please help me in welcoming our newest host on Most Amazing Top 10, Hannah! Hi everybody! <laughs> Starting us off today, we have the Baghdad Fort, located in Rajasthan, India. The fort was built in the village of Kaldara in the 17th century by Emperor Madho Singh for his son, Man Singh, and is now known today as one of the most haunted places in India. The legend says that when the fort was built, the emperor made a promise to a man named Baba Blue Nath that the shadow of the structure would not touch the body of the man in his home where he practiced his meditations. Unfortunately, the emperor lied and in a bout of greed, built the fort much taller and wider than the two had originally agreed upon, which proved to be a big mistake as it is said that the hermit Baba Baloo then cursed the village, which later led 
led to its very abrupt destruction. In 1825, without warning, the village of Koldara, as well as 83 of its neighboring villages, suddenly vanished in the dark. Now, new studies suggest that the disappearance of the villages may have been due to a devastating earthquake, but I'm not so sure. I mean, Baba Baloo seemed pretty serious about the whole shadow thing. Today, the fort is open for exploration from sunrise to sunset, but it is strictly off limits after dark. While there are some who have given in to temptation and broken this rule, we're still unsure of what goes on at Bangar Fort in the dead of night as those who have gone in at this time have never actually come out. Next up on our list we have Area 6. Not quite as infamous as its 51st counterpart, Area 6 is much less well known but still full of mystery and forbidden knowledge. Area 6 is just one area on the Nevada test site that is reserved for those with the highest security clearance. While this place isn't full of rumors and speculations of mermaids and aliens, it is the site that held four nuclear tests for a total of six detonations. This area includes an asphalt runway and some nearby by buildings, including a hangar. One of the buildings was originally constructed as a device assembly facility, but it now serves as the CEF, which is the Critical Experiments Facility. One of the most notable moments from Area 6 took place in 1982 during a very crucial time, as a live nuclear bomb, really want to put emphasis on the fact that it was a live nuclear bomb, was being lowered into the ground, presumably for one of the experiments the base actually came under attack by armed combatants. This of course was surprising and dangerous and frightening, especially considering the live nuclear weapon that was around at the time. As it turns out, this attack was actually just a security team that was conducting a drill. Looks as if someone messed up on the scheduling that day and it almost turned out completely catastrophic. Luckily, whoever was at the control point, which serves as the communication hub of Air Area 6, where they control the weapons triggers and monitor the test nuclear explosions. Luckily, those in the control area that day were able to recognize this mistake before anything got too out of hand. Moving on to Povelia Island in Italy. The small island located between Venice and Lido was once used as a quarantine center for those affected with the plague. The island is said to have hosted over 160,000 infected individuals who, upon their demise, were either buried in massively overcrowded graves or simply burned due to said overcrowding. There are even reports out there that state a whopping 50% of the island's soil is actually consistent of human remains. And believe it or not, it doesn't actually end there as in the late 1800s, the island was used as a mental hospital where it is believed one of the doctors routinely tortured his patients. And if that's not enough, because of all this, it is now believed that the island is extremely haunted, with some going so far as to say it's the most haunted place in the world. Reports of ghost sightings and hearing the screams of the deceased in the dead of night are by no means in short supply. In 1968, the Italian government decided it wanted absolutely nothing to do with the island, the smell of death, and all of the spooky baggage, and therefore it deemed it both banned and prohibited. You are more than welcome to take boat rides around the island, but to step foot on the sands of what is essentially just a massive graveyard is a big no-no. What's the creepiest place you've ever been? Let us know in the comments. Coming up next, we have the Morgan Stanley's Data Center located in New York. It is recognized as one of the most secure data centers globally. This facility plays a pivotal role in the world of finance, handling an immense volume of sensitive financial data and transactions daily. The security and integrity of this data are paramount given its potential impact on global markets and the privacy of countless individuals. 
rules. Consequently, the data center employs state-of-the-art security measures, both digital and physical, to safeguard against any form of breach or intrusion. The exact location and intricate details of this facility are a closely guarded secret, known only to a select few within the organization. This secrecy is maintained not just to protect the center from physical threats, but also to safeguard against cyber threats, which are increasingly sophisticated in the financial sector. The data center's operations are a testament to Morgan Stanley's commitment to security and confidentiality, reflecting the immense responsibility they bear in the global financial landscape. This sounds really a lot like an ad for Morgan Stanley. You're welcome, guys. I'll, I'm doing it for free. It's like a fortress for all things financial, all right? You're welcome, Morgan. On a bit of a lighter note, the Coca-Cola Vault is up next on the list. The vault located in a museum in Atlanta is, as you've probably guessed, home to the notorious Coca-Cola recipe, or the secret formula, some might say. The recipe, which dates all the way back to 1986, was originally kept at SunTrust Bank, under lock and key from 1925 up until the company's 25th anniversary in 1996. When the super secret recipe was relocated to the high tech vault in Atlanta. But any visitors hoping to catch a peek were sadly disappointed as even during the transportation period, the recipe was kept under lock and key, securely sealed inside a metal box. Of course, the 10 foot vault in which the secret formula is kept is strictly off limits to the public. While the recipe is allegedly written down and highly protected, it is said that there are two people in the world who have actually laid eyes on it and have the formula memorized. These two individuals are forbidden from ever flying on the same plane so that in the unlikely event of a crash landing ending in the tragic death of one, the other would still be able to carry on the legacy. Not sure about you guys, but for such a big safe, I kind of wonder what else they're hiding in there. Next up around our halfway point is the Dome of the Rock, an architectural marvel and a spiritual mystery that stands majestically in Jerusalem, captivating the imaginations of millions worldwide. Covered in layers of history and reverence, this iconic structure is not only a masterpiece of Islamic architecture, but also a symbol of the complex tapestry of faiths in Jerusalem. For many, it remains an elusive treasure as access to the interior is extremely limited, especially for non-Muslim visitors, adding to its aura of mystery. Perched atop the ancient and sacred Temple Mount, the site whispers tales of religious significance, rumored to be the place where Abraham prepared to sacrifice Isaac and where the Prophet Muhammad ascended to heaven. The shimmering golden dome visible from various points in the city serves as a beacon of intrigue, silently guarding centuries-old secrets and religious mysteries. This restriction on entry only amplifies the dome's allure, making it a very tantalizing emblem of the untouchable, covered in myth, history, and spiritual significance. And that brings us to the Fukushima Exclusion Zone in none other than Fukushima, Japan. The Exclusion Zone came to be as a result of a nuclear disaster that occurred in March of 2011. On March 11th, Japan was struck by a massive earthquake, followed quickly by a tsunami in which waves reaching more than 10 meters high engulfed the island. The devastation of the natural disaster caused the reactors of the Daiichi nuclear power plant to overheat, melt, and subsequently leak harsh radioactive materials into the surrounding environment. Not only did this cause the area to become banned to members of the public, it also resulted in some pretty interesting effects on the surrounding areas and wildlife. Mutations were reported to be found in butterflies and on the leaves of many trees surrounding the site of the meltdown. Scientists worried about the lasting effects this might have on the area, but a recent study suggested that there was no significant increase to the mutation rate within the area. While parts of Fukushima have now been reopened for public exploration, the site of and the immediate area surrounding the meltdown are still of restricted access. 
Despite these restrictions, in 2016, a Malaysian photographer and two colleagues managed to sneak their way into the prohibited area and after emerging back into the better known world, described it as a ghost town and said being there made them feel as though they were the last people on the planet. Kicking off the top three, we have the Dai Hiwa Kinanto, or the Great Peace Prayer Tower, which is situated in Osaka, Japan. This place stands as a solemn monument dedicated to the memory of those who lost their lives during World War II. This poignant memorial is a symbol of peace and reflection, embodying the hopes for a world without war. Within its grounds lies an especially poignant section, an underground library. This library is a repository of deeply personal and historic artifacts, a collection of letters written by soldiers during the war. These letters, often the last messages sent to their families and loved ones, offer a window into the human experiences and emotions of wartime. However, access to this underground library is not granted to the public. It remains a restricted area preserving the privacy and sanctity of these personal and historical documents. This is exactly what sets this place apart from other memorial buildings. It's not just a memorial in the traditional sense, but also a guardian of personal histories and a testament to the individual lives affected by the ravages of war. And of course we had to include the extremely bizarre yet strangely captivating Morgan Island. With more than 2,000 acres of beautiful land located in South Carolina, the island has often been referred to as Monkey Island, which is quite fitting as the area is home to over 4,000 wild rhesus monkeys. The species, however, is not native to the island, but was rather brought over from Puerto Rico in six shipments during 1997 and three more in 1980 in an attempt to relocate these silly little creatures. Now, if you're wondering why on earth the lovely people on the beautiful island of Puerto Rico wanted the monkeys gone in the first place, well that's because they weren't just any regular old rhesus monkeys, but they were rhesus monkeys infected with the herpes B virus. Which I will save you the google search, yes, humans can 100% contract the virus from coming in contact with the affected monkeys. So it's safe to say that the fact this island has banned public entry, strictly reserving the area for researchers only, is not something any of us are too torn up about. I mean, monkeys are cute and all, but I'm quite happy to count myself out from this particular tropical paradise. Finally, rounding out our list today, we have Club 33, an exclusive and elusive club nestled in the heart of Disneyland. It is a symbol of luxury and exclusivity in a place otherwise known for its accessibility and universal appeal. This well-kept secret of Disneyland, discreetly located in New Orleans Square, boasts a waiting list that spans years, reflecting its allure and very exclusive nature. Gaining membership to Club 33 is not only a matter of patience, but also of financial might, as it comes with a very steep price tag. Rumored to be in the 10th of thousands of dollars for initiation fees, plus annual dues, of course. The club offers its members a unique experience, hopefully, and thank God if it costs tens of thousands of dollars, including access to a gourmet restaurant, a lounge, and a range of exclusive events and perks unavailable to regular park visitors. The interiors are lavishly decorated, offering an elegant respite from the bustling energy of Disneyland. With its rich history, having been originally designed as a place for Walt Disney to entertain dignitaries and VIPs, Club 33 remains one of the most coveted hidden gems in Disneyland offering a side of the park that the public never sees and adding an air of mystique to the already magical environment. Mm -hmm.